Today's video is a huge update of NHL trade rumors as we're getting closer to the NHL trade deadline. Today we're focusing on mainly six teams, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Calgary Flames, the Boston Bruins, the Vancouver Canucks, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the Chicago Blackhawks. We'll jump into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shop Hockey. As I mentioned, today is a huge update of NHL trade rumors. This is definitely going to be a video that you're going to want to watch all the way through. There's all kinds of great information about what these teams might be planning to do ahead of the NHL trade deadline as being discussed by various media outlets and NHL insiders. So let's jump right in here and kick things off with the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, there's been a lot of talk throughout the season that they might be looking to trade defenseman Eric Gustafson. Now, Gustafson's a pretty solid D-man coming off a really impressive year last year. 60 points which was unusually high for him definitely a career season of course things have tallied back this year he's on pace for about 36 37 points was certainly a lot more reasonable uh obviously he's in the final year of his contract as well he's a pending unrestricted free agent now uh, there's been a lot of talk about him being moved because he may be commanding too high of a contract to fit into the blackhawks future plans also given the fact that they have a lot of blue chip blue liners that are really looking to get more ice time in the NHL and I think are ready for that opportunity. So given all that said, there's been some talk that he could be expendable at the deadline. But one thing might be changing that is the fact that the Blackhawks have been playing a very impressive brand of hockey lately and have themselves back into the playoff conversation. And at this point, it's not a wild stretch of the imagination to think that they could actually make it and get into the NHL playoffs, especially as a wildcard team. It's certainly quite possible if they can keep things up. They have two goaltenders in Crawford and Leonard, both playing a lot better lately. Uh, they got a lot of their top guys playing well. Kubalik is certainly into the conversation for Rookie of the Year as well, along with some top defensemen like Hughes and McCarr. Uh, so they really have a lot of things going well for them. So if the Hawks remain in playoff contention, I would think more than likely that Gustafson probably does not get traded just because the fact they're already a bit short on that blue line, given the fact that guys like Brent Seabrook and Calvin Nahan are out for the year. But should the Blackhawks come out of the All-Star break and slow down and fall back out of the playoff picture, which is also quite possible given the fact that it's such a tight race and there's a lot of teams in the mix, if they have a bad stretch of even four or five games, that could be enough to knock them back. There was a stretch last year as well where they got themselves in the conversation, but ultimately, as the season got a little deeper, they fell out of it and fell down the standings only to miss by a fair margin by the end of the year. So I guess we will see what happens with the Blackhawks, but if they fall out of contention, Gustafson certainly a player to look for to be moved. Now let's jump over and take a look at the Philadelphia Flyers. They're a team that's kind of on the bubble here as well. Uh, they're certainly in contention for a potential wildcard spot, uh, but they're having a bit of an inconsistent season as they have really up and down. Uh, the Flyers have been that type of team in the last number of years. Now, there's been some talk by NBC Sports about the possibility they're bringing back a former top player in LA King center iceman, Jeff Carter. One big hole in the Flyers lineup this year has been the fact that Nolan Patrick has been out all season. On I know Chuck Fletcher, the GM of the Flyers, has indicated he does believe Patrick will play this year, but I'm not really sure that they have any legit information to say for sure that that's a strong possibility. But by the time we get to the deadline, which is still about a four-week period away, uh, they likely will have a much better idea on the possibility of him playing this year or not. And they could certainly use some depth scoring and some depth at the center position. And Carter does make a lot of sense from that perspective. His cap hit might be complicated given the fact that he's not just a rental player as well. He does have a little bit of term left on his deal. Could the Kings possibly look at retaining some salary to move the contract? It's a possibility. And plus, what would be the return package going the other way? I mean, as we know, the Kings are rebuilding. So they're going to be looking for younger top players that are either at or close to being NHL ready. So not really quite clear exactly who they can move. But the Flyers do have a lot of intriguing young players that are either on the roster now or playing the American Hockey League affiliate or even still in junior. So there's a possibility they could use that prospect depth to bring back a veteran center iceman that really boots their depth ahead of the playoffs. Now, if you're a Flyers fan, would you be for bringing Jeff Carter back to the Philadelphia Flyers if the price is right? A lot of talk before about Carter not accepting a trade and uh, retiring if he was moved, but ultimately he has dismissed those, those rumors. I've seen recent interviews where he said he'll see what happens at the deadline, but ultimately he will continue playing. I do think his preference is to stay in LA and write out the rest of his contract. But he has no trade protection in his contract and really doesn't have a whole lot of say 
over the matter. And if he wants to play out the remainder of his contract and earn the rest of his money, then he'll have to go wherever they send him. And going back to Philadelphia, according to NBC Sports, is a distinct possibility. Now, there's been some talk about the Vancouver Canucks as well and what their plans might be ahead of the deadline. And a couple key things need to happen first to really indicate what those plans might be. And that's some contract extensions with goaltender Jacob Markstrom and defenseman Chris Tanev. They're both pending UFAs and they're both playing a pretty significant role with the team. Now, considering that the fact that they're in playoff contention, just like I said about Gustafson, I really don't see them moving either one at the deadline if a contract extension is not reached. But it does sound like they would like to open talks with each player uh, over the next little while be so they have a good idea before the deadline what they're looking at on an extension. I've seen remarks as well from Markstrom and his agent indicating they prefer just to kind of play the season out and let things fall where they are in the offseason. Uh, but he certainly had a pretty decent year for the Canucks. They also have Thatcher Demko waiting in the wings here as well. So it's not really clear what the Canucks plans are. Uh, I think that they likely would be interested in retaining Markstrom uh, for a little bit longer, but it's not quite clear how many years they want to do that. And I do think term probably would be the sticking point if they do have any hiccups uh, trying to figure out a new contract. I mean, he's played well enough to get a longer term deal. Um, and he very well might want that. They might prefer shorter term to give more opportunity to Demko uh, and even other goaltenders that are coming up in the wings like Michael DiPietro as well. Not quite clear how they feel about everything in that regard, but those two contract negotiations will certainly play a big role uh, in their decisions leading into the NHL deadline as well. But I would not expect the Canucks to go out and spend a whole lot in terms of making acquisitions uh, to their roster. I think Jim Benning did a lot of that in the offseason between free agents and trades that we saw them make. A lot of those moves are paying off. Uh, they're certainly a lot more competitive this year, poised to make a playoff appearance here by the looks of things. So I would think the Canucks likely head into the playoffs with a similar roster than they have right now. Instead, and even if contract talks don't progress well with either of those pending UFAs, they'll likely, at the very least, use them as their own rentals and sort it out in the offseason. Now, the Canucks also got some interesting news that could impact them, not for this year, but as early as this offseason, which would have a big impact on next year, that they might be able to re-sign former 2014 draft pick Nikita Triamkin who played 79 games for them shortly after being drafted. He played a couple years in North America. He came over from Russia. He's a six foot seven, absolute monster of a defenseman, uh, but he certainly had a little bit of trouble uh, adjusting to life in North America, adjusting to the NHL ice, uh, and therefore decided that after a couple of years, it wasn't in his best interest to stick around. And he headed back to play in Russia in the KHL for the past three seasons. His contract is now coming to an end there. Uh, and there is talk that a potential return to the NHL very well could be in the cards and that he is willing to talk to the Canucks first and foremost before exploring other opportunities around the NHL. They're very interested in re-signing him by the sounds of things. Uh, obviously, it would be a fairly inexpensive contract uh, given the fact that he doesn't have a ton of NHL experience. It'd be a second NHL deal, probably looking at a shorter term, uh, probably one, two, maybe three-year term at most would be my guess, uh, and it wouldn't be super expensive. would certainly help their cap situation and at the same time add a really big body defenseman back there who very well could possibly become a big part of that decor. He mentioned him playing alongside Tyler Myers, uh, those two big monsters back there, very well could prove to be a good pair down the road in the future. Certainly have some good size back there to protect some other puck moving guys like Quinn Hughes. Would not be a terrible idea at all. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And if Triamkin can return to the NHL and sign with the Canucks possibly as early as July 1st, he's able to uh, look at options outside of the KHL when his season ends in April, but technically not eligible to sign an NHL deal until July 1. So we'll see what happens and keep monitoring that situation as we move forward towards the offseason. There are reports concerning the Boston Bruins from Joe Haggerty of NBC Sports. Sports, who covers the Bruins closely, talking about what their plans might be ahead of the NHL trade deadline. And as far as he's concerned, their primary trade target that they're eyeing is a Rangers forward Chris Kreider. Now, the Bruins and Rangers have had a fairly extensive trade history in the last number of years. They've made some big moves before, and another one here might be in the cards by the sounds of things. He even indicates that GM Don Sweeney might be open to moving his 2020 first round pick in order to sweeten the deal to make it happen. If you remember last year, the Rangers did get a first round pick for Kevin Hayes. And I do think it's fair to say that Kreider is as much, if not more valuable than Hayes. So I think they're likely going to be looking for a first round pick, maybe even a little bit more in return to make that happen. Maybe a pick and a prospects. Hard to say exactly what the price will be, but something like that probably would make sense for a Chris Kreider package to make the trade happen. Now, Kreider likely would fit in nicely on the second line 
very well might push Jake DeBrus down to the third line, or Crowder could play third line. Either way, it gives him a lot more depth on the wings. Uh, certainly provides a little bit of grit as well, which certainly fits in nicely with the way the Bruins like to play. Uh, so I do think Kreider would be a perfect fit in the Bruins uh, organization. Of course, he's from that area as well, so it's a bit of a homecoming. Uh, so I think Kreider would be an excellent choice there in Boston. Obviously, the 2020 NHL draft is a very deep draft. It's all kinds of great talent. But if the teams like the Bruins who are eyeing a Stanley Cup uh, would be one of the few teams I would think that are willing to move that first round pick in order to uh, make a big splash on a cup now. Because most teams, even if they feel they're going to be in the playoffs, I think are going to try their best to hold on to these first round selections. Even teams looking at, you know, like 15 to 20 range are still going to get themselves a pretty solid NHL player. At least it looks that way as of right now. But the Bruins eyeing Kreider makes absolutely no surprise and certainly makes a lot of sense. And we'll see here what happens. Of course, the Rangers are uh, supposedly going to be holding some contract extension talks, but my personal belief is more than likely based on the patterns that we've seen here the last few years that Kreider does get moved and the Bruins are a perfect landing spot for him. There's also some talk that other forward Pavel Bushnevich could become available as well. He's been given lots of opportunity uh, between power play and top six minutes earlier, and his production is certainly not where it needs to be to remain there. I think the Rangers are kind of in a situation with Bushnevich where they've seen a lot of inconsistencies. He's had his moments where he's performed uh, quite well and produced quite well, but the inconsistent production is certainly not doing himself any favors and the Rangers do have a lot of interesting young prospects who they very well might uh, you know want to give more an opportunity to, to next year so moving Mitch name which it's not a given but it's certainly a distinct possibility depending on the return could be there's lots of teams out there looking for depth scoring ahead of the playoff race before the deadline and he could be another guy and of course don't forget that uh, young Swedish prospect Lee Anderson who's back home in Sweden right now who's technically suspended from the Rangers uh, could be included in any of these packages that we see the Rangers do before the deadline assuming they do become sellers which I do think it's quite likely uh, they have some other pieces that are kind of possibly be moved as well including goalie Alexander Georgiev which there's really no new information on him and what the talks have been or what teams might be looking into his services too. Uh, there's obviously been links to the Leafs in the past, but nothing really new on that regard as of today. So we'll see what happens, but the Rangers could very well be a very busy team making several moves ahead of the deadline. Now I also want to touch base here on the Calgary Flames and the Toronto Maple Leafs and these two Canadian clubs very well could hook up on a potential trade. The Flames could look to the Leafs as well as others to satisfy their needs ahead of the deadline. Now, before we get into the Leafs Flames potential trade and what the rumors are floating around out there, there is some talk that the Flames might, instead of going to the Leafs, could very well look to one of their division rivals in the LA Kings to try to snag uh, right winger Tyler Toffoli away from Los Angeles for a package that could include a lot of future assets going to Los Angeles. Now, Toffoli, I think, would be an excellent fit with the Calgary Flames. He could play that right side on the top line with Monaghan and Goudreau, allow Elias Lindholm to move back to center, uh, put some more scoring on the second line, and kind of spread things out here a little bit uh, to certainly kind of give them more depth in their top six positions. Toffoli's mostly been playing top six and top line minutes with LA. Looks like they're kind of showcasing them to try to get somebody to bite on a trade. Things very well could retain some money on Toffoli as well. The sweet a deal depending on what the package return could be there was belief before that likely a second round pick maybe a prospect uh, could be something that the kings could be looking for for to they might try to upgrade that to a first if he plays really well down the stretch here over the next few weeks i guess we will see what happens but one uh, connection as well is that the foley played a couple of years of junior hockey with sean monahan at the ottawa 67 so certainly some familiarity there as well some potential chemistry that might not take as long uh, to kind of get those two connected playing on the top line together with the flames and very well could ignite that top line which hasn't been as strong as we've seen in the past the flames desperately need scoring and to foley very well could be the answer to their issues but like i said that's not the only possibility that the Flames are exploring. And according to Sportsnet's Eric Francis, there are some other deals that could be uh, being examined right now by the Calgary Flames, including a potential swap with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, we know the Leafs need defense. That's no secret. Uh, and they have lots of good young forwards who could be traded to help their other team needs. And they have lots of other good young forwards who could be used as trade bait to acquire that D, potentially a backup goaltender or some other areas of the team as well. So certainly the Flames could be looking at a player like Kasperi Kapanen, for example. Uh, they very well could look to include defenseman TJ Brody, as well as maybe a forward like Sam Bennett. 
But the Leafs certainly need help on the blue line, and Brody Verrill could be a player uh, who could help with that. I mean, Brody's a great skater, uh, could certainly fit in on that blue line with the Maple Leafs playing uh, somewhat of a top four role for them. TJ Brody has the potential to be a good fit with the Leafs. Sam Bennett could provide that extra sandpaper that they don't really have as much of at the forward position as well. Maybe a package of Bennett and Brody for Kapanen. I'm not sure if that's exactly an even trade. I guess you can let me know what your thoughts are. There wasn't necessarily uh, a link in the story here from Francis indicating that that would be the trade just that those are the two players on the flames that they would look to move to Toronto uh, and trying to acquire one of their younger forwards and he kind of singled out Kapanen as being the most likely of course they could look to other guys like an Andreas Janssen but I think if they're going to make a bigger move like that Kapanen would probably be the player that they would prefer that's just my opinion on the situation but I guess I'm not the Flames GM so it's hard to say 100% for sure what their preference would be but I do think it's quite a possibility we could see those two teams connect on a deal it does make a lot of sense from both sides Looking at the Flames' blue line now between Brody and Travis Hamannick, I think it's more likely they try to trade Brody and re-sign Hamannick. I think Hamannick fits there a little bit better longer term, at least in my opinion, I think he does. Uh, so Brody, along with the Bennett, maybe some other prospects in the wings here very well could land themselves a top six forward. And they very well could look across the country to the Toronto Maple Leafs to make that happen. So if you're a Flames fan especially, do you see a deal happening between the Flames and the Leafs? Do you see a deal happening between the Flames and the Kings? Which one do you think would make more sense? Do they target Tyler to Foley uh, and try to maybe trade some younger future assets? Maybe even a Sam Bennett in that package that could possibly work for LA? Or do they look to a team like the Leafs where they can maybe move a defenseman and a forward in exchange for somebody who can play top six, top nine minutes like a Kasperi Kapanen? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content, and give this video a thumbs up and check out our membership options as well if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching everybody, and I will catch you next time.